Uh, guys, welcome to today's show. I am here with Colin Furlong, uh, who is a digital tracking and web analytics expert. Uh, I'm really excited about today's conversation. Um, so, Colin, maybe you can start us off with just a bit of an uh, introduction to you, your background, uh, and, and, and what, you, what you do. All right, sure. Well, first of all, thanks so much for, for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to the conversation. Uh, so, as you mentioned, I work in web analytics and digital tracking. Okay. Uh, so... Basically, what that means is that I, I help companies to uh, to get up to get set up with the with the data uh, that they need to to understand their product, okay. uh, understand how their users use their product, be it a website or an app, yeah. uh, and uh, how to use this data to help to help grow their business. Awesome, 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 good. Uh, I'm I'm excited about that because I mean, as you know, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, Bravo and what we do, and you know. Uh, Ultimately, what this podcast is about is really introducing people to the many actors who play a part in orchestrating growth. Uh, our belief is that growth is a process um, uh, with many inputs, and uh, I think you and, and, and the, the sort of space that you play in uh, is really one that uh, doesn't, you know, it gets talked about a lot, but uh, I think rarely do people step inside of your world. So I'm excited to, uh, to explore a bit more about what you do. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you actually got into it. I know that you, you, you have a background uh, that started at uh, Google, uh, then went, I think, to Softonic, and then uh, at Typeform, and now you're doing your own thing. So tell us uh, a bit more about your journey and how you got into uh, uh, tracking and analytics. Uh, yeah, so I actually began working in, in the world of analytics almost by accident. Okay. I, I sort of fell into it. So out of out of college, I started working in Google in a customer support team okay. uh, for a product called Google Checkout. Uh, but then after a couple of years working in Google, I needed to change teams to uh, to a different team. So I was looking around internally, and I came across the Google Analytics uh, technical support team, and mm -hmm. I thought it looked like a really cool product, looked like really interesting work. Yeah. And uh, that's how I started working uh, with them, and I've been working with uh, with data ever since. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so we hear, and I think uh, you know our guests. Uh, I guess listeners uh, hear, you know, a lot about the importance of data and data uh, and, you know, the changing uh, landscape of, of, of data and, and um, you know, privacy matters. So can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, when, when you step into, you know, a day's work or uh, a new company that you're starting to work with, what are the, the, the things that you sort of uh, look at when you, when you get started? <clears throat> when you roll your sleeves up and sort of sit down and say, okay, now's the time we get started, what are you going after? What are you looking for? So usually the very first thing I'll do when I start working with a new company is that I'll talk to, you know, maybe the, the product owner, the yeah. marketing people, the various stakeholders to understand the, the product itself, okay. uh, to understand the business. You know, what do they want their users to, to do or to achieve when they start using their, using their product? Okay. Uh, then after that, I'd probably take a look at the data that they, that they're already collecting. Okay. Uh, to understand, you know, how does that fit in to what they've told me they want for their business? Right. And, you know, what can be used or what maybe needs to be, to be refreshed right. or if we need to start from, from the beginning. Right. Um, then would come the, the big part, uh, of the work, which is when I would, you know, design the tracking system that, that needs to be, to be implemented to define exactly, you know, what kind of data needs to be collected, what events need to be sent, okay. um, you know, work with the stakeholders to see which tools are the right tools for, for them to use. Right. And so this might be a little bit of an, an iterative process to make sure that we define things exactly uh, how it needs to be. Sure. And then after that comes the development phase, okay. uh, which is, which would involve a lot of work uh, with the development teams specifically because they need to, you know, get into the code of the product yep. and make sure that the data is collected correctly. And there'd be a lot of QA between the developers and myself to make sure that, that things are working smoothly with all of the data uh, destinations. Okay. Uh, and after that, there's probably a, kind of a, a training period or the training might even start beforehand. Okay. Uh, to make sure that the stakeholders know how to use the data sure. uh, going forward, 
that they know what kind of data is available, how to implement new data, you know, in the future when, when new requirements uh, arise. Yeah. Um, and after that, we're probably more in a sort of maintenance mode. If we're happy that everything is, is working okay, sure. um, then the ideal situation is that a lot of the, the work can be handled, you know, in house with yeah. the people who are still working in the company, but you know, doubts and questions will always arise. Right. And of course that is the ideal situation, but that can change depending on the, on the circumstances of each right. company. Right, right, right. So, so your work really kind of, um, uh, I think has a lot of intersectionality with the different stakeholders of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there's probably, I mean, as you articulated, uh, there's the product owner or the, I guess maybe the founder in some cases, um, um, uh, and also the, the, the technical teams, uh, who are responsible for the implementation and tagging, et cetera. Um, so let's, let's change gears a little bit and talk about, uh, sort of the ideal state, right? So I'm, uh, I'm a new company. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a founder of a, uh, of a new company. Um, where, uh, where, where, where would you advise, uh, sort of, um, um, getting in touch with a person like you or involving a person like you? So does it start during sort of, uh, the, the, the phase of thinking about what, uh, we're about to build and sort of drawing out the specs, uh, or is it, okay, product's been shipped, you know, our MVP is live, uh, and now we call in uh, a, a Colin, uh, or, you know, what, what, what's sort of the ideal state? Well, the ideal state is definitely to involve data people as, as early as possible. Okay. Um, so I, I would recommend even with a brand new product, just starting, make sure you have some sort of, you know, basic, uh, setup in place. Sure. You know, if you use a tool like uh, Google analytics or there are other alternatives, mm. but the, the most basic implementation is, you know, relatively easy to implement and yeah. it's definitely better than, than shipping with nothing. Sure. Uh, so having something at launch is the best situation and, I know when a new product is, is starting up, people are super busy. Yeah. Uh, they've a million different things to be worrying about and data is often forgotten about. Uh, but I would strongly recommend, you know, identifying at least your, your key KPIs. Okay. Um, what do you want your users to achieve in your product and making sure that you have the data in place to know if, if that's actually working or not. Got it. Got it. Got it. Awesome. And that's the ideal situation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now <laughs> doesn't usually happen with with brand new products yes. frankly and this and this was actually my next question right so uh because i think there there's there's probably a couple of types of uh of of guest listeners right so you've got the ones who are in creation mode right now you know they've got their initial team together they're developing or designing the mvp and maybe it's you know nearing a, a point of being shipped uh and then i think you've you've also got listeners uh who might be tuning in who have something and they're like, my goodness, I, I, you know, like I've got GA hooked up, but I don't look at it. I don't know if it's hooked up, uh, correctly, uh, which is a problem that, uh, that, that you and I have actually worked on together, which is, you know, tools in place, but, uh, not everything is firing, uh, properly. So let's talk uh, a little bit about for people who have already shipped, uh, and their products been on the market or is live, uh, and they're just sort of like, mm, you know, Collins made some good points. Uh, now what should I do? Uh, because I think there's something there. I'm not really checking on it. I don't know, uh, the quality of the setup. Uh, what, what would you recommend doing? So it's like an audit or, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely worth doing an audit. Okay. I, I, I would recommend, you know, if you don't have a lot of experience in the area, yeah. um, you know, contacting someone who, who does have experience sure. to make sure things are, are working correctly. Yeah. Depending on the size of the business, you may or may not want to get someone, you know, in-house. Yeah. Uh, but if it's, uh, you know, if you don't have the resources to have someone in-house, definitely contact a, a, a consultant to make yep. sure that things are, are set up correctly. Got it. And definitely it's, you know, it's never too late uh, or too early. You know, the, yep. the, the best time to start was, was yesterday, but the second best time is, is now. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. I like that. Um, so I want to maybe uh, change gears a little bit and, and talk about um sort of the the history of this role right so i'm I'm not too old you're not too old but 
I do remember uh, the, the days, uh, you know, where, you know, sort of uh, everybody was, was trying to just build a website, right? And you had people uh, affectionately known as webmasters, right? Um, and and, and your, your webmaster um, could have very well been your designer, uh, you know, your developer, uh, and the guy or lady who was recommending that you, you know, implement Google Analytics, right? And now, and, and I'm sure that, that roles like you have existed, um, uh, roles like yours have existed for some time, but now, you know, we're seeing this sort of, uh, I don't know, I don't want to call it fracturing, but we're seeing like super specialized people whose jobs is just to think about tracking and analytics setup. Um, do you have much insight or context into that evolution and, and why it is that roles like this became so, so important? Um, I think as, you know, the internet or the digital world yeah. in, in general has has evolved people have grown to understand better the the importance of of getting data tracked correctly mm. so traditionally like you said you'd have you know this magical webmaster who would yeah. do pretty much everything <laughs> um but even you know more recently than that uh in in the data world yeah. you know typically you'd have the the data analyst maybe sure. uh, who's a fairly well established uh, profile sure. and they would also be the ones who would need to make sure that all the tracking was set up correctly maybe yeah. even looking after the databases as well yeah and i i can certainly understand that especially for small companies where it just doesn't make sense to separate everything out sure. um but ideally they're they're two different kind of skill sets okay like uh i know um i can analyze data I, I can look at reports but it's not my strongest point and mm. there are other people who, who do it better yeah and similarly you know other people can look after you know tracking and, and data governance sure uh, but having a person dedicated to it uh, um, it just it makes sense uh, in the wrong long run if if you can afford it yeah got it got it got it so <clears throat> that's an interesting uh, point that I actually wanted to, to touch on so could you maybe uh, just to give folks I guess the full context of like you know uh, if Colin were in a company, like, let's say big company X with big budget, um, like what would be the sort of uh, the scope of the people who'd be in your orbit, right? So on your team, who would it be? You, you mentioned a data analyst. Would would they be next to you? Would there be sort of a developer who's working alongside you? Give us <laughs> give us uh, some insight on that. So in the specific team, it, that really depends on the company okay. uh, with, you know, how they, how they organize sure. uh, themselves. Uh, but there are like a series of profiles, okay. shall we say, that yep. may be in the same team or, or in a different team, but okay. they, they work together okay. an awful lot. Uh, definitely a key figure is the data analyst or the data scientist. Okay. Um, because they are usually the people who are, analyzing the data of course uh, in depth sure. and they're often the people who perhaps even understand the product better better than anybody else okay uh then of course you have the product owner yep. uh, who you know in some companies would also be the person looking after the data analysis yeah. and the uh, uh and the tracking requirements sure. uh but ideally you know the product owner should be concentrating mostly on on product development yep. and leveraging the the knowledge of um of someone like myself in, okay. in tracking and the data analysis team. Okay. Uh, the marketing team is usually another very important stakeholder because the data that you collect often feeds into marketing tools like Google Ads and, and Facebook Ads. Sure. And then on the technical side, you have the developers because they need to implement yeah. a lot of the, the the tracking or the data requirements that you specify. Yeah. And then also on the development side, you also have the, the data engineers okay. uh, who would be looking after more the the kind of the in-house uh, data setup looking after data warehouses yes. or or data lakes and okay. the, the internal data flows okay. and um there's probably more people that i could name yeah. uh, wow. but those, <laughs> those are like the the key stakeholders with whom i would usually work got it okay 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 very interesting um so i want to talk about let's say high points of of your work right where you see like wow you know this work is literally foundational to a product success. Uh, do you have any stories, uh, you don't have to go into names or of companies or anything, but do you have any stories, uh, you know, the, just some context in, in, um, on why I'm asking this question because, you know, I know, uh, you know, uh, some of our listeners might know that like a role like this is, is really essential or at least having someone like this in your orbit is essential. Um, but I think folks might think that it's 
sort of like let's implement and then kind of be done with it, right? Like I've checked it, that box, I've got GA, I've got GTM. Um, but when does it all come together in, in, in the moments that are like, ah, okay, like, you know, I got this insight based on uh, uh, the work that Colin did and the foundation that he set. Um, what have you seen in terms of uh, moments like this? Sorry, that was a really complicated question. My gosh. <laughs> Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Crystal clear. Good. Um, yeah, I would say getting, you know, really valuable insights, um, you know, game changing information, mm -hmm. you know, some, like some people might tend to think that it's like a kind of a holy grail sure. uh, that you can achieve, but I would say it's actually, you know, it's, it's pretty quick if you get the the right data infrastructure set up even mm. on a, a fairly basic level you know you're tracking the right kpis yeah. to understand your business then you can get really valuable results really quickly yeah like even on the most you know basic level uh, let's say you have a an e-commerce uh website yep. and you're you're tracking um conversion to purchase sure and if you have the rest of your tracking set up correctly, you can easily see, you know, which marketing campaigns are working best. Sure. So which marketing campaigns do you need to spend more money on because sure. they're fantastic? Sure. Which other ones maybe not working so well, you need to kind of rethink. Yeah. Um, the same goes for, you know, customers from, from which countries yes. or from, you know, which websites are yep. performing best. Right. And that's really not a difficult thing to, to achieve. Yeah. Um, another example would, might be with say AB tests. Yep. You know, if you're not sure which version of your registration page is working best, you can carry out an A-B test. If you have it set up correctly, then you might see within, you know, a couple of days, a version A is working, you know, 10% better than, than version B. Then, right. you know, go with version, go with version A. Right. So again, you don't need to be thinking super complicated stuff sure. and you can get some pretty valuable results, um, pretty, pretty early on. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, I think, um, that's always, um, I think a good thing to, to reiterate to, uh, to folks in, 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 I'd, I'd even say, um, you know, as, as someone who, who works in the space to myself, because sometimes we do, uh, you know, we see certain things lining up and we are hoping for this big watershed moment, but, you know, compound interest mm -hmm. is, is magnificent, right? Uh, and it's power to sort of have little things accumulate over time and, and add up to, to, to dollars and cents or, you know, product success, whatever. So, uh, good, good to hear you sort of reiterate that. Um, so, one thing we hear a lot about, uh, especially, you know, being, being, uh, here based in, in, in Europe, uh, is privacy and data privacy. What are, um, what are the implications on, uh, from your point of view, you know, thinking about tracking and privacy, what are the, what are the implication of changes to privacy regulations that people who have tracking implemented need to start thinking about and taking quite seriously now? Yeah. So the, the biggest change now compared to say not too many years ago is that you, you actually need to be thinking about this stuff and, mm. and taking it seriously, whereas mm. before it, it didn't really matter. So you do need to, to understand the legal implications and yeah. I'm not a legal expert, yeah. but you do need to <laughs> disclaimer. To have, yeah. <laughs> you do need to get some, some legal advice yeah. to make sure you have things, uh, have things set up correctly Yeah. from, you know, a more of an, an implementation, uh, point of view. I would think in terms of, say, PII, personally identifiable information, yep. just think very carefully about where you're sending it and if you really need to, to send it somewhere. Mm. So a lot of websites would need to collect, um, you know, a person's name and, and their email address. And you will need to send that data to, to some systems in order for your product or your service to function correctly. Sure. Uh, but maybe to, you know, your web analytics tool, you don't need that there. Um, so just make sure you only send this information where, where it really needs to go. The right. less places you have personally identifiable information, then, then the easier it is to, to look after it. Right. Right. Um, another situation kind of more specifically with regards to say the, the cookie, uh, legislation that has been coming yep. in, in recent years. And, you know, a lot of users are also much more educated sure. and they don't, they don't like cookies. Yeah. 
Uh, so a lot of people are using server-side tracking uh, okay. these days. Yep. So instead of relying on data going from the user's browser uh, via a cookie yep. to to some external tool, you know, if you can send that from your own servers, then you you bypass the user's client. You're not clogging up their bandwidth or right. clogging up their their browser with a lot of cookies. Right. And um, it, the data is is usually of a, of a better quality as well if it's possible to do this. Right. Awesome. Great. Um, um, I, I think I'd, I'd love to, to sort of hear some, some, maybe some personal reflections from you on your career. Um, and one, one question I think is always uh, a good one just to, to, to get people in this, um, in the right frame of mind is, you know, if you look back on your career, what three things would you say if you knew then when you started what you know now, you'd be sort of three times more the rock star that you that you already are. Um, what, what what sort of um, revelations do you have? This again, another poorly chosen <laughs> word. My goodness, uh, what what reflections uh, can you share with us? Yeah, I would say one of the the biggest lessons uh, I've learned and have incorporated it in, into my day to day is that yeah. sometimes less is more. Mm. So. Even through, you know, a lot of this, this conversation, we've been talking about you have to get data. You absolutely must track all of these things. Um, but to look at it from the other point of view, a lot of people, myself included in the past, we tend to just track everything because, oh, we need this. We need this. We we need this. Yeah. And then that data, it's just, you know, filling up your systems. Nobody's using it and and it's just more, more hassle than it's worth. Right. You know, uh, a very obvious example would be something like a terms and conditions link. Okay. You know, if you if you track that, what are you going to do with that information? Right. If nobody's <laughs> clicking it, you can't remove it because right. you need it there for legal reasons. So, you know, right. n- nobody cares. Right. So, again, mm. it's, it's important to track things absolutely, sure. but only track what's actually actionable sure. data that you can use to, mm. to advance your business. Mm. And um, apart from that, I would also say it's very important also to... Um, to explain to people the the benefits of good data uh, as well as the the risks of, of having bit bad data sure. so often in in the data world we can be seen or we run the risk of being seen as like the the data police okay. you know the, the bad guys who who you know we come with our big stick yeah. because we want to have our our spreadsheets looking looking nice and neat <laughs> uh so to avoid that image yeah. it's definitely important to to explain to people um, you know, what benefits are there for them right. uh, in, in having good data? Because yeah. really, you know, the data people, we're not the main beneficiaries of the data. Mm-hmm. It's for, for the other people in the company, sure. much more so. Sure. So last question, uh, and it actually just came to, to my mind as you were, as you were answering the, the, the previous one. So what is your role taken to the extreme? Um, and let me clarify that. So I've heard the phrase, uh, if you can't, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, right? I've heard that phrase. Um, I've, I've actually used that phrase before. Uh, and at the same time, I've heard the phrase that everything that can be measured doesn't count and everything that counts can't be measured. How should people sort of reconcile these two sort of opposing ideas, right? One, which is like measure, 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 which as you just said previously, like, you know, if you can't do anything with it, why measure it? But on the flip side, you know, um, it is important to measure, uh, obviously, uh, for, for, for your product, for your company, for your customers, et cetera. Uh, so what, what advice can you give people to help them sort of thread that, that needle when they sort of take your advice from this podcast, uh, and go back and, and try and get their setup, um, uh, working and, and sort of running well? Yeah. So, I mean, as you know, I'm a very, pro data uh, kind of guy um but data doesn't tell you everything um data for example it's not going to tell you what your users are are thinking Mm. uh, or you know it probably isn't going to tell you what your users want Mm. Uh, so it's definitely important to to not lose the the human connection uh, with your users so if at all possible talk to them not all of them (laughs) but but talk to, to some of them to understand their you know, their emotional uh, response to your website and understand what their, what their needs actually are. Mm. So this is where like, you know, UX teams, uh, if they're, if they do studies, this can be, this can be really useful. Um, And also 
when you are looking at the the data, the fantastic data that that you yeah. can collect, <laughs> uh, you still have to look at it, you know, with an element of of human creativity, sure. because the data isn't going to give you uh, an answer. idea. You yeah. know, you need to come up with this this idea yourself. Yes. So you definitely need to have that kind of human element. Yes. And of course, once you have these ideas, if you come up with them yourself or from your users, uh, definitely track them yep. <laughs> to, to make sure that they're working as you as you want them to. Yeah, do. awesome. Bringing it full circle. No, I, I like that, and I think it's a good place to to close out because uh, you know one of I think the themes that ran through what you just said is basically, um, you know, your work um, becomes most valuable when a team who brings sort of an, another set of complementary skills. A la the human side, um, um, uh, along with curiosity, when these sort of all get uh, mixed together to use mm -hmm. uh, to orchestrate growth, uh, because ultimately I think that's what uh, what, what folks are after. Uh, Colin, I think that's a, a really a great place to uh, to wrap up. Uh, your your insights have been super valuable. Uh, really appreciate you joining. Looking forward to the next time. Uh, and to our listeners, once again, we just had a, uh, a great conversation with uh, Colin Furlong. Uh, uh, a legend in the, uh, the the digital tracking and uh, and web analytics space. Um, if you uh, want to reach out to Colin, I am sure you can find him on LinkedIn. Uh, he'll he'll so certainly sort your tracking and uh, and analytics uh, uh, needs out. Colin, I want to thank you for uh, for joining me. This has been great. Uh, looking forward to the next time. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.